Okay. So, if everybody has their A in a comfy place, let's try her again and see if that makes a difference. Ready? Here we go. Now, how was it that time? Anybody notice a difference there? Did it go a little better with the, getting the first finger beforehand? Good, that's good. Anybody else have any problems or questions before we try the arpeggio? Oh, hi there, Mr. Cat. <laughs> we just got a- Yeah, I have one. Yep. I have one. I remember you gave, uh, we were talking about putting, you know, uh, things across your thing and yep. I was I forgot what the third one was three quarters and one was two thirds yeah and like there'd be a third what what was the third one okay so if you're taping up your fiddle then you're going to put the first finger uh tape it's going to be about you know almost three quarters of an inch it really depends on your fiddle what you want to do is you want to tune it Find the right place like that, and then that's where your tape goes across. Okay? And you want to make it so that the tape is going to be right under your finger. The second finger one. Oh yeah, because you know, one one crazy thing about the fiddle is that your notes might not be in exactly the same place all the time because it's a small wooden instrument, it changes all the time, right? So that measurement is different depending on the day that's why you got to use your ear so yeah using your finger and the and the tuner to get the place for the tape is a way better idea than measuring it i just say those measurements to give people an idea of how far that first finger is away from the nut because it's actually quite a long way from the nut and it often takes people by surprise yeah that really helps that was further away than I know everybody says that yeah and then so the second finger is not quite as far as that okay a little bit less than that because it's still a full step like from between the open string and the one that's a full step a whole tone so they have another whole tone here but it's just a slightly smaller because of the instrument and then the third finger tape will go right next to it okay does anybody have tape on your fiddle here there you go. Look, see, that's a good example, Sherry's tape there. And I like your very thin tape, Sherry. That's good because you're more likely to feel it under your finger. It's good. Okay, so that's how you do it, Bill. And it is a pretty good idea. It lessens the guessing at first quite a lot. Okay? All right. So any other questions or should we try it again? Bang it out again. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, one more time. I'm going to make you guys bigger. I got this gigantic TV the other day, and now I can have you guys like life size. Yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? G.
Okay, Nancy, you looked like you weren't enjoying yourself there. Oh, because because I'm the only one who can hear this. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm just struggling with uh, with keeping my bow in the right place. Ah. And, uh, so if I focus on my fingers and making sure that I'm making the note, then that I my bow can go anywhere from yeah. Uh, it, way up to, all over the to, place uh, crazy places and, and I catch it and, yeah. and, and come back okay yeah. so a couple of things about that first of all one way to kind of keep your place on the strings uh, relatively is to have a little bit of weight sure just the tiniest bit especially on the up bow now that's do you find it happens more on the up bow um so Yep, yeah, I'm sliding all over the place. Yeah, the uh, up bow. Uh, on the E and the, and, and the A string, I, I am sliding. Yeah, so that's a classic problem, especially on the up bow, like I say, because you're going uphill, right? And any little change of direction, and it's going off like that. See that? Yeah. yeah, anything at all. And also, you're starting at the empty end of the pickup truck. So just imagine going up an icy hill backing up with an empty pickup truck right okay. there's no weight there to grab the string so it's a really good idea to give a little nudge at the beginning of your up bow just the slightest nudge to grab that string and then it's more likely to stay in place all the way up to the end of the bow okay, okay. but also one other thing that might help if you're having a problem when you've split your focus is to add something that might do the job by itself. Like, for instance, the way the Suzuki people put the sticker across there. Yeah. A white piece. Oh, uh, uh, under the bridge? Under uh, the, between the bridge and the... Right the on the fiddle. Right on the top of the fiddle itself. They put a... They put like a... It, it looks like a... Look, I just made it with the rosin dust. <laughs> it's just a stripe uh, yeah. underneath here on the top of the fiddle. And you just use that painter's tape that doesn't do any harm to the varnish. And okay. and your eye will cut you the per, your your peripheral vision will catch that and you kind of try to line it up with the bow. That's this the old Suzuki trick for kids. But I find with adults little things like that because you have to split your focus. Your your eye might do that and catch on to that. Okay, I'll I'll do that. Thank you. And of yeah. course the doorway, of course. <laughs> the, the, yeah, my my elbow's in there, but but yeah, it can wander. Yeah, it's the wandering elbow. That's yeah. what I call it. Yeah. Anyway, but that's a very good point. Anybody else having any problems with uh, with the two major, two octave G major scale there we just did? No? Excellent. Now, what about the arpeggio? Do you remember how we did the arpeggio and I talked about it? Great. So we'll try the arpeggio now. Do you need me to call out the notes or the numbers, or can, can we do it without that? Call them out, you got it. Okay, we're starting with open G. Ready, G. Two. D. G. That's a three. A one. A three. E two, close. Back to A three. A1, D3, open D, G2, open G. Okay, now let's try it right away again without me calling out the numbers and see how we get along. Ready, and. get along who was able to uh, everybody able to keep up and play all the notes yeah no sherry do you want to give it a try for me see if you're see if there's something I can kind of help you with oh you gotta unmute there we go 
Excellent. Okay, geez, I thought that was pretty good there, Sherry. Pretty good. Now, there's a couple of things. The first thing is you were a little bit sharp, be, meaning a little bit too high on the on the fingerboard. And so I don't know whether that was because your your finger was too far up or whether you were pressing too hard. Now I was looking and it looked like your finger was on top of the piece of tape. Okay, so yeah. Probably, probably just pressing too hard. Okay. Okay, and that might be better for you because it's a little less work when you don't have to press as hard. Great, thank you. Okay, very good though. I thought that was great. Anybody else, Joanne, you want to try it for us? Okay. Let's hear it. Pretty good, Joanne. Pretty good. What's that? Until I didn't practice. Oh, no, I don't know about that, but I thought you definitely have a good understanding of what to do. Your hand was in a good spot. Your bow was a little bit close to the bridge, and I could tell that you were kind of like, like that. And that's, that's probably why, just a little bit of a potential screech there, you know. And the thing is, when you get a little close to the bridge, it's not like it squeaks right away. It threatens. As you're playing, it threatens. You hear this little, uh, so that could be what was going on, you know? And then you had the problem with your elbow. So when you went over to the E string, you kind of did it with your elbow. And you noticed when it was time to go back to the A because you were at a weird angle and you had to reset yourself. See what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that elbow, just like, uh, uh, I can't remember who was saying, it gets in the game, it's a bugger, you know, it's a, like you think it's not, but there it is, you know, so that's all that's going on there, okay? Pretty good though, pretty good with the fingers. Anybody else want to try it for us before we carry on and do it again? Yep, let's hear it, Katja. I love G major arpeggios. Really good, really good. That bow was moving good, fingers good. Very, very much improved there. Very much improved. That's excellent, very good. Anybody else want to try it before we slam away? Judy, do you want to give it a shot? You got to unmute though. All right. Okay, now that started off really good. What happened was, very classic thing that happened, when you got up to the top, your hand shifted up the neck of the violin a little bit. And so when you went to go and play the D on the A string, your hand was way up and it was sharp. 
and you could tell. And so that means that your bow didn't want to move. And then you tried to fix it uh, and you got a little bit better as you went down. So there's two really good things about that. <laughs> the, most, uh, the, the most valuable thing about that is that you noticed and that you tried to fix it on the way down. Very good. That's the way you should be doing it at this point. But just to let you know, that's all that happened was the hand came up a little bit. And all the fighting came after that. And it wasn't until, like, you did, you going up was pretty good. See what I mean? So that's a bugger. That hand coming up is a bugger for everybody. Okay? Anybody else? Or should we just plow into it, do it again, and do it a little bit faster, too? So let's do it twice. We'll do it that same speed, and then we'll do it a little faster, okay? Because when we go faster, it's when we notice what's weak. Okay, ready? Here we go. just hard to remember what finger to put down next is that the hardest yeah okay so that is just repetition right the more you do it the the more your your hand will learn it that's the whole that's part of the point of doing this is that your hand learns to do these arpeggios and then when you're trying to learn them in a tune your hand already knows them and so it kind of gets half of the game done okay now let's see let's do some of the bowing exercises let's take G major and let's do uh, the uh, 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 on each note, okay? We'll do one of them on each note. So it'll sound like this. Okay, and we'll, we'll go back to so a little slower than that. And remember guys, you're going for clean starts and clean stops. Ready, and.
how'd that go? Looked okay. Anybody have any problems? No? Cool. Okay, now let's try the next thing, The uh, this here. Uh, did we do the little circles? Let's try a bit of that. Little circles, four of them on each note of the scale. All right. A one, two, three, go. One. pretty good looking bow movement there. Everybody getting the idea of that? <clears throat> Anybody getting some decent sounds when they do that? Or is it still crunch? Anybody getting the odd ringing note? Hope so. Keep at it and when in doubt try to use more of the bow. I know we're only using a tiny bit but try to use as much of that tiny bit as you can. You know, that's the big thing we're trying to do here. We're trying to belt a note out of a bit of bow. So you're just trying to mi maximize that contact for, for the circle. Okay? Shall we try that one again? Should we want to do that one again? Let's do it. Okay. And you can stop me anytime if you have problems or questions. All right. Oh, one, two, here we go. It's very good. Keep that up. Does anybody want to play it for me so I can hear what kind of sound you guys are managing to get? Uh, even just a bit of it. Don't need to do the whole thing. Anybody want to do that? Anyone? I'll do an octave then. Oh, great. Thanks, Tara. Judy? Oh, oh who is it? Who is it? Dancy. Okay. Elaine. Oh, Elaine. Okay. Let's hear it.
Okay, now quite a few of those worked and rung out. Did you hear when it was working? Yeah. Yeah. I also heard the crunch. Yeah, and that's okay. Let the crunch come because that's why we're doing so many of them, right? And you just get right. that batting average up. Did everybody else hear when it was working? When Elaine did it there? Yeah? That's good because that's what you need to hear in your in your ear to be able to get that sound happening on your own, okay? That was very good. Now, a uh, couple of funny things. Um, first of all, you've skipped the D string on the way down. And I find it hilarious that everybody always skips the easy ones, which are the open strings. I don't know what it is. Um, but the other thing was you were touching the other strings a little bit. Uh, when you were on the D, you were touching the G a little bit. And you know what? It's no big deal. Let it happen at this point because we're trying to get some good contact happening. And if it means you play two strings a bit, we can clean that up. You know, but at this point, I want you to get that good strength. So don't worry about that too much, okay? And that goes for everybody here too. Getting that good bite is what we want. If it means a little messy, we'll clean it up. We're always cleaning everything up, right? <laughs> that's what I tell the wife. Keep working at it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Now let's try some jiggle. Check this message from Lena. Just have to listen, stay off the video. Just got married. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, Lena just got married. So that's pretty awesome. Congratulations, Lena. And yes, yeah, sit back and listen. That sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? A one, two, three, and. too bad not too bad now with this exercise I think I mentioned that it's a good thing to do because it's kind of like the fiddle in motion right it's mostly what motion I use when I'm playing and I don't know if you noticed but it's my wrist that's doing that watch my right arm really close if you can get a good yeah that's a good shot of it <laughs> kind of this whippy kind of uh, flippy floppy motion to get that rhythm going okay and the nice thing about this is we can do it faster we go yugga digga 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 yugga digga 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 yugga digga digga try to get a rhythm going shall we try that so let's try it the same speed we did before and then when we get done that we'll do it again and I'll push you a little bit and we'll see what goes wrong okay
faces. What went wrong for you when we went fast? Well, at one point, I found the bow up, I think, on top of the bridge. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That seems to be a real sort of tendency for you to for that bull that bow to want to pull back, eh? Yeah, yeah. Now so. I had a teacher once that I when I was a teenager I had the teenage tendency, which is teenagers when they are being forced to do it by their parents, play like this. See that? Yeah. I yeah. lean. I used to lean my elbow on my knee and play like that. And so I had this teacher in Halifax who was like bound and determined. And he was like, okay, well, if you're going to play like that, that means that your bow is going to want to go down here all the time, right? So counteract that by leaning it away from you. And then it'll constantly be working its way back to where you want it to be. Sure. So maybe the opposite could be a thing for you. So I'm going to lean up a little? Or You're going to lean that bow. You remember how I talked about the pitch of the bow, how the bow can pitch like that? Yeah. And I was reading more about that. And like it can be a real useful volume knob, first of all. The less hair you have on the bow, the less sound you make without much, without too much more trouble. See what I mean? But we don't really want to do that. We want to belt her out. But you can lean the bow just like that teacher told me. And you just, it looks like this. See that? Yeah. And it doesn't take much, like when I was doing it, it was just a slight pitch. Like all you need is a slight pitch and it'll, it will work that way for you. Okay. The other thing is, if you're always going like this, just try to go like that a little bit, you know, think ahead of it. Try to straighten out that hand as if you're doing that all the time. Okay. Okay. It'll keep all you right. away. You know what I mean? Now, who else was making funny faces? Yours was the most entertaining, I have to say. So who else was making funny, <laughs> frustrated faces when we were doing that? Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Do you, do you um, wiggle the bow sideways a bit when you're doing it? Like this here? Yes. That's the uh, pitch. Oh, no, uh, well, sort of like this. Yeah. That's the pitch that I was just talking to Nancy about. Now, you know, it does, the bow does pitch while you're playing. There's not much you can do about it. Like, it's just the natural way that it goes. The, but I'll tell you this. The tighter you grip the bow, the more it pitches because you're, you're, gra like you're, you ha you're grabbing it tightly. And so when your hand tur turns back and forth like this, it goes with your hand. See that? And it'll really pitch. So, you know, they used to say that the bow hold itself should be dynamic. And when they say that, they're talking about the fact that when I'm holding the bow, look, it's amazing to me how I can hold the bow perfectly when I first grab it. Like whenever I play the fiddle, this is what I look like when I first grab the bow. And within about four or five notes, it looks like a train wreck. But anyway, so this is how you're supposed to hold it. And the reason they call it dynamic is because the bow should be loose in your fingers. See that? It, should, it shouldn't be tightly gripped. If it's loose in your fingers, then the pitch, your hand will move all over the place, but that pitch stays to a minimum. See that? But as soon as I start to tighten it, then it really starts to follow my hand. See that? And now it's drastically pitching. Also, it changes direction. When you, when you grip it too tight, it does, it's more likely to do this. Whereas if it's loose, then it's just going to kind of stay on the track. See what I mean? So a nice light bow hold. They used to say that the bow should be sitting on top of your fingertips, not the fingertips gripping the side of it. See what I mean? Like a trailer hitch. Does that help there, Katya? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. So above but all, just it, lighten up. Yeah. Do you do it um, deliberately? You know, do you do you? No. The only thing I do is what I was just saying to Nancy there. If you if you tend towards the bridge all the time, then you can kind of pitch it away from you to help oh, you see, stay okay, see, or okay. the other okay. way around. Uh, but also you should check. Sometimes I've had a few students that they check and they notice that when they're holding the bow, it's already at a pitch, which you don't really mm. want. You want it to be, you know, kind of flopping down naturally, like let gravity take its course. Because if you start off with a pitch, then it's really hard to correct it while you're playing. Okay. All right. Okay.
Anybody else? How about you, Joanne? How'd you get along? Oh. Oh, what's that? Who? Where? Oh, no, me, Sharon. Yeah, so, Sharon. <laughs> so I'm noticing now when I'm holding it. Yeah. Uh, when I'm playing, the, my 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 pinky finger is not even on it anymore. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does, especially where are you playing? Usually on the bow. Um, probably here. Yep. So th at that point, the upper third of the bow, your pinky doesn't need to be on there. Okay. And, and it's actually a good sign that it's coming off because when I do a jiggle, watch my watch my right hand and my pinky. See that? See that? So you don't yeah. really need it. That's why you see fiddlers all the time with those off of there. But else, as soon as I cross center line. It's engaged, watch. See that? Because if I don't, then the tip just wants to flop down like that. So as oh, soon so as... I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah, oh, see that? G, I have to, yeah, okay. And when you're on, and as soon, when on the up bow, as soon as you pass center line, you're going to have to engage that pinky because the bow wants to flop over. Okay. See, see. how that works? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And yeah, when you jiggle, it's normal for that to happen. And if you're in the right place in the bow, then it's actually a good idea. So it's basically where, you, where your bow is playing. If it's yeah. here, you're gonna need your bait and your pinky. If it's here, no, if it's if it's here, there, you're, you're gonna, gonna need the pinky. That's here, right. You don't. you don't. Because the only yes. job the pinky has in the bow hold is to is to counteract the weight of the stick. That's all it does. Okay. See that? Yeah. And that's why you're supposed to not have it rigid. You're supposed to have a little tiny bend to it so that you can adjust that. See that? Okay. But if you're not, if you don't need that, then you don't need it at all. And you even see, if you look at the great master violinists, they, when they're up in that end of the bow, their pinky is off as well. Okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Anybody else before we try it again? Faster. No? Let's have at her. Nice and easy. Oh, one, two, three, uh. cool with it is to start working on a tune okay now last time I think I mentioned somebody mentioned about the swallowtail I think it was you there Shona I played it and you were like I want to learn that tune and it is a wicked tune I was wondering that's, that's, that's our main standard tune for dancing oh that's it's right that's what you said <laughs> that's right it's probably because it could possibly be the second most popular Irish tune in the world uh, the first most popular Irish tune in the world is uh, uh, probably either Morrison's Jig or Kesh Jig. Okay, has anybody ever heard of Kesh Jig? And what were you going to say, Nancy? What's your idea about the most popular well, Irish tune? From a Scottish dance perspective, then it, it was always the jig was always to uh, Irish washerwoman. Oh, of course. And was, yeah, and that that's what I recognized first as as a. And, and the swallowtail is kind of like, is similar, or I, I hear similar You're things. right, you're right, it is similar, yeah. You know, the Irish washerwoman is not actually an Irish tune, right? It's no. a Scottish tune about Irish people. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but, uh, 
Yeah, it's and and you ever see the uh, the the dance, the Scottish Highland dance called the called the uh, Irish Washerwoman? Well, like an Irish jig. It's an yeah, but it's all acted out. It's like oh. it, she wears this outfit and and she yeah. does this kind of like thing where she's kneading dough or doing laundry you know and she gets Why? right mad and she shakes her rolling pin in the air and stuff like that yeah. I have a version of that a vaudeville version of that from the states with they do it with step dancing like wooden sold shoes yeah but for sure on that yeah, yeah, it's 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 your it's your classic tune, a Scottish tune, making fun of Irish people, and the other way around, you know. <laughs> but anyway, well, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Okay, Sorry. so I'll, how about this? I'll play you both. All right. The nice thing about the cash jig, uh, like both tunes are equally popular. You know, the swallowtail jig and the cash jig. The Irish washerwoman has a little bit more going on, so we'll leave that for a little while. But between the Swallowtail and the Kesh Jig, they're both very popular starting beginning tunes. And, uh, and the, but the big thing is, is that the Kesh, you might find a little simpler. Now you'll hear, I'll, tell, I'll play them both. I need some water maybe. All right, so the Swallowtail. <laughs> Sure. Listen to the cash. two of them. So what do you guys think? What is your, who prefers the swallowtail? Okay, who prefers the cash? Okay, couple. So let's go with the swallowtail, you know. I was just playing the cash there and I don't think there's a huge amount of difference. So we'll go with the swallowtail. So let me play it again. Oh, Lena's saying the swallowtail. <laughs> cool. Right on. So let me play it again, because I want it to ring around in your ears a little bit before we start playing it. And I want you to do the, the thing that we do in this music when we're learning tunes by ear. Number one thing is to listen for the repeated phrases. All right? There's always going to be lots of repeated phrases, and you kind of catch on to the phrase that you hear that repeated the most. In many cases, it's the ending. Okay, because the ending would be the same for the first part. It was, and I think that's the case with the swallowtail as well. So anyway, I'm going to play it a couple of times, medium, and I want you to really try to internalize that me that uh, melody. Listen for those repeated phrases, and then we're going to get it. All right. So here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, you getting that internalized a little bit there? Did you notice how the endings are the same? For the A part and the B part, same ending. Okay, so you have that to look forward to. Anyway, so it's all the same finger positions as we use for the G major scale. All the same. So the low two on the A string and the, wait, no, no, on the A string it's normal. Yeah, because it's slightly not quite E minor. So anyway, but on the E string we have the low two. Okay, to get the, to, to get the G natural. So all the same finger positions except for the regular two on the A string. And the first lick, I'm gonna show you here, we got, watch my hand when I play this first phrase. I think I can spotlight myself, let's see. Get easier to see. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna play that first phrase there. You can see what my fingers do, which is not much. <laughs> See that? That's the first phrase there. I'm going to do it again. We've got three, one, one. One, one, one. See how I do that with my finger? Now at this point, you're probably going to be doing this to get those two notes, A1 and D1. And that's okay, but eventually at one point or another, we're just going to do this little lean, okay? So we've got three, one, one. One, one, one. Three, one, one again. And then we go from the A1 and we go down the scale to get to the next part, okay, which is going to start on the two. So I'm going to do that again. Three, one, one. One, one, one. Three, one, one again. And then A1 down the scale. Open, D3. Okay, so we're going to all try that together. Just going to get this back on the go here gallery. Perfect. All right. So let's all try that together, guys. Three, one, 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 three, one, one, A1 down we go. So get your three down and we're going to go three, one, one. Ready? And one, one, Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Let's do it again right away. Ready? D3. Three, one, one. A1, D1, another one. Three again. One, another one. A1, open A, D3. Okay, yep. That's right. I can see everybody's third finger going down there. That's good. One more time. D3. Ready? Two. And. Three. One. 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 Three. One. One. A1. Open A. D3. Now, are we getting that? Is anybody not getting that? It looks pretty good. No, you're not getting the cherry? Nancy, you? Just just a question. The 111 is on on the on which string? A1 and then D1, D1. D1, D1. A1, D1. Oh, okay. Like that. Okay? Got it. How about yes. you, Sherry? How about you, Sherry? Did you have a question too? Actually, Nancy just answered. She asked me the same. She asked the same question. Okay, Thanks, cool. Nancy. No problem. Okay, so let's try it again, guys. Unless somebody else has a problem, but let's try it again. Three, one, 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 one. Ready and. <laughs> much better. Okay? Pretty good. Last time, I swear. Ready? And three. One. 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 Three. One. One. A1. Open it. Oh, 
that looked really good that time. Very good. Now, the next phrase changes chords a little bit, changes arpeggio notes, and now we're going to go to a D part. So that's going to be D2, open, open, open A, oh, back to open, open. See that? So there's only one note that I'm using for with my finger, and the rest are all open strings. So D2, open D, open D, open A, open D, open D. Okay, let's try that again. D2 and then open D. Ready? And two, open, open, A, back to the D. Another one. Okay, good. All right, one more time with that. And this time I'm not going to shout out anything. D2 and then open D. Ready? And. Okay, and then we're going to get A3 down. That's a 3-2-3 three, three on the A string that comes next there. 3-2-3 three, three on the A string. Okay, and after we play that 3-2-3, three, three, we're going to go to the A and scale down to the 2. So it sounds like this. So let's try that together, guys. Put your both your three and your two, actually put all three fingers on the A, and we're gonna play three, two, three, and then the open A and down the scale. So A3, ready, go. Three, two, three, open A, D3, D2. Okay, pretty good. Let's do that again just like that, except better. A3, ready, and three, two, three, open A, D3, D2. One more time. A3, ready, go. Two, three, A, D3, two. That looked like it worked there that time, guys. Last time, I swear. I read a meme yesterday that music teachers and uh, music teachers, dance teachers, and phys physical trainers uh, don't know what the meaning of one more time is. And uh, I would agree. Anyway, so one more time with the three, two, three lick. Okay, ready? And three, two, three, open A, D3. Two. Good. And then we're going to do the first phrase again. Okay. So this is what we have so far. Let me show you what we have so far. We got the first phrase, which is the 3 one, one. Then we got the two open, open. Three, two, three. That's what we've learned so far. And then we got to do the first phrase again. With a long one this time. And then we do our ending. See that? And that's the A part. Done. So we already kind of know three quarters of it, technically and by rights. Okay? So let's see how far we can get. Let's review the three one 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 bit and see how far we can get before it's horrible steaming wreckage, but it's all right. So three, one, 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 one. Ready, and three, one, 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 three, one, one, A1, open A, D3, Two. Open, open. A. D. D. A three. Two. Three. 
Open A. D3. D2. First phrase again. 3, 1, 1. 1. 1. A1. D1. 1. 3 again. 1. 1. A1 long. get the ending. Now, looking at everybody trying to do that looked pretty good. I saw fingers moving right. I saw bows moving pretty good. All right. Let's do it again before anything happens. See how we get along. Three, one, one. Let me drink a water here. Okay. Three, one, one. Ready, two, and. One, 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 three, one, A one, there we go, open, A three, two, open, open. And I gotta say, like I'm looking at people and it seems to be working. Does anybody want to try playing it for me so I can see how you're doing? No? Anyone, anyone? Give it a go. Shona, you look game. Alright, I don't have it, but sure. That's okay, <laughs> I can help you. My chin rest is killing me today. I don't know if it's my daughter. Oh. Ready? I'm ready. Just gonna mute. Hold on. Oh, that's good, Bill. Really good. Okay, go ahead there, Shona. What, what? Go ahead. to the D. So close, so close. It's, it's 2D, it's 2D, D, A, D, D. Now the A, three, two, three. Yes! Good! That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Who else wants to try it? That was very brave too, Shona. Very brave indeed. Anyone? Aw, oh, come on. Judy, let's hear it. Open A there. Yeah! Woohoo! Right on! Now there's a couple of notes in the middle section, the D major section, that you missed there. And the one thing to notice there is that it only uses basically the open strings, right? 
Two open, open, A open, open. See that? And because it's so simple, it can be very confusing. Okay? Very good. Let's all try it again, guys. All right? And then we'll get the ending. Let's see. Let me keep my eye on the time here, too. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. Lots of time. Okay, here we go. Don't stop for any reason. Keep your helmet on, your gun up. Three, one, one. Ready, two, and. Another three, two, three. And then down the scale from A. And then three, one, one, one. See that? So it's an A, three, two, three again. And then to the open A. Down we go. Three, one, one, one. That's the ending, okay? And it's the same one in the second part. So let's try it from the A, three, two, three. Three, two, three, open. Okay. Let's put A, three down. Ready, and. Three, two, three, open A. D, three, two, three again. One, one, one. Let's do it again. A3. Ready? And three, two, three. Open A. D3. Two. Three again. One, one, one. One more time. Ready? A3. Three, two, three. A. D3. Two. getting that ending looks okay but I gotta ask <laughs> yeah everybody getting it I, I have one question yeah be, be, just, just before that ending yeah um, it's it's the a three two three open sorry a three two three open and then D Three D two, D three D two, and yeah. then the ending starts. No, no. Then we do the first phrase again. So we got the three one 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 one. That's the first phrase. Right. The second right. phrase is all the opens. Two open 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 open. Okay. Right. And then the three two three bit. That's the part of the second phrase as well. Okay, that's part of the second phrase. Okay. Then we do right. the first phrase again. Three one 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 one. Right. And then the ending. Okay. So let me put that together for you since I got, since that was a great question. So we got the first phrase. Second phrase. First phrase again. Long one, two, and then the ending. See how that works? Everybody see that? I'm going to do it again. We have the first phrase, three, one, 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 one. And then the twos and opens. Three, one, one again. Long 
one this time. A little two. And then the ending. Three, two, three. You see how it's constructed now? You got the road map. Okay. Shall we put our helmets on and try grinding away at it for a few minutes? All right. I have nothing else on. <coughs> okay, let's go dead slow, guys. Three, one, 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 one. Ready? And three. One. crying or beat their fiddle over the computer or anything so that, I find that to be a good sign that's good let's do it again right away okay okay D3 a oh, one two and three one for some brave soul to go right from one end of that thing to the other. Any takers? Anyone? Anyone? Bill's going to do it, I can tell. He's reaching for his mute button. I can do it, but, uh, you know, I know what it is, so it's not as if I'm just learning it. Okay, that's still, it helps still to understand the phrases. favorite part was when you were playing the long one followed by the two you did them both in an up bow which is the best way to do that okay so remember that that's very good the only thing I would say though give yourself more bow you're pretty sure of the tune and it sounds good so give yourself lots of bow so so it comes out nice and strong okay very good man very good who else wants to do it come on Bill was brave Who's going to do it? Joanne, you look like you're ready to do it. I'm just... 
can speak both languages. I'm bilingual. <laughs> I, I, know this, I can see how this is probably a good way. It's good. You know, the finger numbers are good. Like the, what I love about the finger numbers, I, I hate them as well, because what's great about them is the reading. It, once you associate your finger number with the note that you're playing, you take out a step in reading and it's almost instantaneous. It's really right. quick and easy, right? But the drawback is when you're like 28, and you get your first gigs playing with singers and bars, and you have no idea what note you're playing, it's a problem. Right, right. So I always think a combo is good. But anyway, give it a go, see what happens. One. B. Which one? B. A1. <laughs> I'm thinking your other way now. <laughs> uh, I, I'm lost. Start again. Two and then open D twice. Oh, okay. And then open A and then open D twice again. Okay, hold on. Joanne now so if you're used to reading it you did great getting those phrases now the one in the middle I find actually really hard because it's so simple eh? and I'm shouting out to open 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 it's like what the hell are you talking so that's what's going on there it's F D D A D D yeah I think if I had the music I'd be okay, but I think... This ah, but you're doing so well without the music. And if you think about it in another way, those are all notes from the D major arpeggio. Right. See right. that? So you're just arpeggiating in the key of D for that bit before you go back to E minor. Yeah. See that? Right. See, that's all it is. It might help to think about it that way, but that was very good. Now, if nobody else wants to try it, let's take the grinder to it. All right? We'll get it down to, say, I don't know, 300 grit, something like that. Okay, dead slow, ahead dead slow. Ready, two, and.
in three, one, one. How are we getting along? Anybody not able to get through it? <clears throat> Sherry? Oh, you want to mute, unmute? So for me, where the gap is, you're, and it's just me, you're calling out three one one, but I don't know what string you're on. And then, yep. so, and then you'll go one one one, and I I've missed the jump. I don't know what the string is for the one one one. Okay, the ones so, the I'm ones are the first <laughs> the first one is on the A, and then you go back over to the D one one. Okay, so there's only one one on the A string in that whole passage. See that? So yeah. three one one and then A one back to D one D one. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Anybody else have a problem where they can't get through it and need to ask me what the hell's going on? How about you, Shona? Are you getting through it? Yeah? How about you, Katya? That looks good. Are you getting through it okay? Katya? Medium? I'm missing the middle part, I think, so I can, I can, um... Give it a go, I'll, I'll help you. Open, open. Yeah. Open, A. Yeah. Open, A. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's it. That was it. So you were just also confused with the, with the opens. And it's, yeah. so it's D2, open D, open D, open A, open D, oh, open D. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's a common problem with that, with that little I bit see. there. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's try it a couple more times. We'll grind it unless there's any more questions. Okay, let's grind. Okay. Three, one, one. Ready, two. Three. Three, 
Okay, it looks like everybody's getting a little bit more of it, for sure. Shona, I you think you're having the same problem with that open A in there. Yeah, and so F, D, D, A, D, D, that part there. The, the, the easiest and most confusing part of the tune. <laughs> Anybody else having any problems where they stop and they can't go more, can't, can't keep going? No? Okay, it's getting really good. I'm going to check the time here. Okay, so we got some time. So I'd like to try it a couple of more times, all right, and maybe get it slightly faster because the other problem is, is that the slower you go, the harder it is to hear that melody. You know, it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, how long have I been playing this G for? You know what I mean? So we just pick it up a tiny bit that you might be able to hear the melody going by. Okay. Put you on full screen again. All right. So let's try it again that speed, and then I'll speed it up a tiny bit the second time through. Three, one, one, once more. Ready? And three, one.
Not bad. Not bad. Everybody was hanging in pretty good. Uh, Kachi, you're missing that ending lick, the 3-2-3 three, three again, when it comes down around again. Okay? Is there anybody having... How about you, Joanne? You, you doing okay? You getting most of it? Yeah, good. Anybody else? Any problems at all with that? No? Okay, that's great. So I want you guys to practice that A part this week, and we'll get the B part next week. Now, luckily, the B part, there's not much different... You see here how that's the same setup. The first phrase, the second phrase, same, different. First phrase again. <laughs> And then the ending that we already know. And that's it, man. And that's how all the tunes are constructed for the most part. Unless you get some real crazy Irish ones that have five or six or seven phrases, you know. But we're not going to be getting into that. Swallowtail is lovely. We're going to get that. So I want you guys to practice that A part this week. Try to get it smooth. Try to get it in tune. Since you're Play it after you're finished playing your G major scale. Okay? Because your fingers will already be used to all the right shape and you can get through it much easier. You're always trying to set yourself up for the fingers coming down uh, in tune on their own so you can practice, concentrate practicing the tune. Okay? <coughs> now, I put, the, uh, I put the classes that we've done so far, the videos of them, on, the, on a Dropbox file. And I think I sent you guys all a link to that Dropbox file. Did everybody get a link, a Dropbox link? Yeah, but I can't seem to download it. It tells me I don't have enough room. Yeah, so, so you're not the only person that has had that problem. So I've decided that Dropbox sucks. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to, I think I'm going to make us a YouTube channel. Okay, oh, so okay. Dan McDonald fi okay. Beginner Fiddle yes. Class YouTube channel, and I'll upload upload them to there, and then just invite you guys, and you can watch them okay. whenever you want, you know. And so that way you can kind of have this to play along with. Please go ahead and play along with me while I'm playing the tune that slow and calling out the numbers. Take advantage of that stuff since we can't get together in person. We might as well take advantage of the of the uh, technology. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, we'll learn the uh, second part of the tune next week. Now, is there any other s questions at all before we finish up? Um, Dan, yeah. do, do we use the same uh, site for, this, for Zoom next week, or are we be sending a new one? No, it's always the same link every week, same link, same link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any questions at all? I don't, I don't have a question, but I do, I just wanted to mention I've had some really good success with a, a pro, an app called Amazing Slow Downer. Oh, yeah. Has anybody heard of it? I have. So so it's it's really good. So if you have, a, like if Dan does a swallowtail full, like, speed, you can actually, you can actually slow it down to as slow as you want, but it still sounds like the real music. You can also stop it in certain chunks of where, like, the different phrases. So you can just, and it can repeat <laughs> over and over again. So I highly recommend um, that. And it takes, like, a, I guess, and uh, whatever the, whatever the, uh, file type is. MP3. It, it actually, it takes, it does videos and everything, eh? Oh, really? I haven't tried that. Yeah, I had... I, I, people have been slowing me down on the amazing slowdowner for like, I don't know, like 10 years now at least yes, that I've been good, hearing about good. it. I've never seen it. I don't never have to slow anything down. But <laughs> uh, but what the advantages people tell me are, yes, it does not change the pitch. Because no. when I was slowing things down back in the old days, when I was doing my, my jazz diploma, for instance, we had to transcribe a solo, right? And I picked a Max Roach drum solo... And, and so to transcribe it, back in those days, you had to book time with the half-speed tape machine. 
Okay, it was in the office. There was only one, and you had to put your name down. And the problem with that was, yeah, sure, it slowed it down, but it also dropped the pitch by like I don't know how much, like where wherever you slowed it down to, and so you'd have to transpose as well. But the amazing slow downer does not do no, that. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, doesn't change the pitch. Doesn't make it sound when we weird. Take, when we tape your sw uh, swallowtail, we can. <laughs> put it in there. And Absolutely, and you can take the ones off, the videos off YouTube and do the same thing with them. With the, so I've heard. Anyway, so good point, Sharon. Very good tool. Any other questions or comments or concerns or queries? Thanks so much for putting it on YouTube. That will be so much easier. I'll yeah. do that this week. Has everybody got some kind of... I looked on the session.org for a student the other day, and the third version of Swallowtail Jig is acceptable, all right, if you want the music for it. Um, I think you're doing great by ear, but if you want the music as a reference, the third version down on the session.org I find to be acceptable. It's not perfect, but it's, it'll definitely be uh, adaptable, okay? All right, guys, well, that's great. Great class today. We'll learn the rest of that tune next week, and get, get in touch if you have any questions, of course. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. See you later. Bye, See you next time. Bye-bye. Gurgle, gurgle. Ugh. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still recording on QuickTime. That's not great.